and welcome back. We are excited to share something we've been working on for months now, a new WFAA series called La Vida, The Life. It's our mission to elevate the voices of the North Texas Latino community. And the hope is to form authentic connections with our culture and heritage and share all of it with you. Our gente, our people, is diverse, multinational and multiracial. But what we really want to highlight is the passion that we all share the music, the dance, the food, and most important of all, the rich cultures that run deep underneath it all. And our first story airs tonight at 10. It's about someone many of you will recognize, especially if you listen to Spanish music growing up. Rebecca Lopez joins me now. And Rebecca, you interviewed a pioneer of Tejano music, Little Joe. Uh, tell us what personally what he means to you and really to our generation. Well, you know, little Joe was a, is a living legend, honestly. Um, I remember my mom putting his music on and that's when we knew it was time to do our chores, but boy, <laughs> we really loved to listen to his music and he meant everything because he was one of the first to really break out. Um, he was before Selena. I mean, he really was the person that eventually everyone emulated and, and then you saw the rise of the Hanu music, but he was the first and y'all had a lengthy conversation. He shared so much with you, especially about the memories. He did, he talked about just, you know, he's been on the road for 65 years mm -hmm. and he's 80 years old and he's still going strong. And one of the funniest things is we shared uh, some memories about his time with Willie Nelson because he was in farm aid with Willie. Um, he was out there, you know, with Willie Nelson just trying to raise money and also partying with Carlos Santana, recording some stuff with uh, Santana. And so I asked him, I said, what was your most memorable moment? And here's what he said. The most memorable moments I don't remember because we were having <laughs> a great true. time. <clears throat> but they tell me we had a lot of fun. <laughs> and I believe them. <laughs> he was such a character, just such a joy to interview. You know, you talk about his style of music. You know, you said it's Tejano. You hear about Norteño music, rancheras. Talk about his style. and really what he means to Tejano music. Well, you know, Tejano music is more accordion type music. Now he'll say that he's a Chicano artist, not a Tejano artist. So he kind of corrected me on that. But we still listen, what his music was, like I said, the precursor to Selena, to Emilia Nevada, to Moss, and some of the really big bands that came up later. But he sings in English and Spanish. And so he says that he appeals to everyone and to all generations. And as you know, like you, like I said, you know, he's he has spanned our generation and future generations. He is, he's just a great um, entertainer. He told you a lot of stories, including some about his brother, you said? Yeah, so his brother died in a car accident at a young age, and he said that he promised himself, and even because his brother was there at the beginning, Little Joe started singing when he was 16 years old to raise money for his family, because before that, he used to pick cotton and he used to be a farm worker. And so he said he didn't want to do that anymore. So he promised his brother that one day he would, he would make it. And so when his brother died, he says that is what compelled him to keep going. And here's what he says about that. Music continues to evolve as new generations bring their own ideas. So we should always welcome, you know, the ideas and sounds and everything that new artists have to offer. So that was more a little bit, he, what he talks about his brother, that was a little bit more about, you know, when you feel like the Hano music is dying, he says, it's okay, you know, but we want to embrace the new people that are coming in. And that's important to him as well. Well, you know, little Joe hasn't just done a lot for music. He's done a lot for activism. And now he wants to send out a big message about COVID-19. So he had COVID, he's 80 years old, he survived it. He says it has affected a little bit of his range of his voice, but he's um, coming back. In fact, he's coming to the state fair. So he has recorded, this was the pre-vaccination when he got um, COVID. So he has recorded um, some uh, PSAs in both English and Spanish that they're airing in San Antonio, El Paso, trying to reach the Latino community. He says it's important to get vaccinated. That's his message. You know, we did a, a quick uh, kind of a teaser on our WFAA website earlier today. We had a lot of comments about people who grew up listening to him. But for those who have no clue who he is, real quickly, why should they watch tonight at 10? 
Because he went through a lot to get to where he is today. Um, he went through, he grew up in Temple, Texas. He um, grew up around racism, but he beat all of that. And he says, it is important to know our history, to also know our future. So that's why it's important to listen to his music because his music is, is woven into what we now call the Hano music and, and Spanish language music. I mean, he was before all the really big acts. He's and a trailblazer. So he, he's a trailblazer. And so that's why it's important to know our history. Rebecca Lopez, we look forward to this story. Thank you. And you can watch her full interview with Little Joe tonight on WFAA News 8 at 10. And for some of you who have lived in North Texas for decades, the name La Vida might sound familiar. Well, that's because it is. We're bringing it back in this brand new way. You can read up on its history at WFAA.com slash La Vida. You can also find out more about our commitment to educate, connect, and celebrate through Latin culture here in North Texas. We have a lot of great content coming your way, and Rebecca and I and the rest of our team welcome your ideas. Just email us. We'll be right back.